so welcome to Bunny's Designs. This is a live show. This is part three. I'm, I'm working in Joanna Basford's Ivy and the Inky Butterfly. So I've been practicing for a couple of weeks with my Derwent graphic liner pens and these are acrylic liner pens, acrylic ink liner pens, but I'm using them as a watercolour. Um, so I love some pale, so I've done the first cover with some pale and I'm going to have a practice at the back with my second colours. So I've been having a play in a few other books. I've done about 20 pages and I've cut with some colour combinations that I quite like. Um, so I've done a pale version, now I'm going to do a stronger version. So I've been scratching a bit of colour onto a damp dish. I'm going to use this slightly different. So I've got my, my number one Winsor Newton watercolour sable rigger and it's a tapered paint, paintbrush and I quite like it. So I'm dunking it in water and I'm twisting it across a damp baby wipe which gives me a damp brush and it also gives me a point. So I'm going to touch the end of the brush and see if I can pick some quite strong colour up. Now the colour comes out of the side. So I want to do it in a kind of an inky way. Now I've got to remember that we can't use too much water and we can't we can't kind of rub too much because and these colours are very strong. So I'm going to use them in a couple of different places, I think. And again, it's getting paler and I want to use it all up. So I just got one kind of strong colour on the end. And perhaps just a little bit there. So I've got used most of the colour, rinse the brush out, and then I'm going to touch the blue and again it's going to be quite strong that it's a oh, sheet when it picks it up it picks it up very kind of strong that's not as strong as I wanted now may have to go to a bigger brush for this but we'll see and what I want to do is to cut some dramatic color changes so when this green but you've got to be careful because if you use it too strong it'll go through the color book and I don't want to do that so we've picked up this lovely strong colour now and then it's gone paler and by the time it goes across the pink, uh, the, the yellow, we're going to get some greeny effects. So I kind of like that, it's kind of in your face. Now this is the back page so it's kind of um, this is the back page and it's card so it's going to be, uh, react differently to pages so I've had a practice um, and you've got to be careful you can't rub too much but if you're very careful you can do this now you could use this technique with anything else it doesn't have to be ink you can use it with the neos um, and, and you can do both techniques with the neos or with any water based product inks have got a little bit of a mind of their own and you've got to be careful that you don't go through. So the next one is two and seven. So that's number two. So number number three was Tom uh, and number ten was Billy. Um, so Number two is Clockwork, because it's Clockwork Orange. They've all got strange names. And number seven, I've written a list of what goes together. So I haven't done a colour thing because it's wasting paint. I've played in the colour books, in, in a two or three other colour books, and I've written down the numbers that I like to use. So I've got number two and number seven, I think, must be purple. <clears throat> So you originally, when you first get them, and I'll do that with this one, is you when you first start to use them, you shake them a bit because it's a, there's a ball bearing in there and you need to mix it together. Now, I don't tend to mix it too much. So I shall do this one next and then I shall I'll zoom in and you've seen how I do it. 
and now you can see how it reacts. Now sometimes you get a bit of a blob, so you've got to be a bit kind of careful but and make sure that we're in, in focus. So I got the very strong one and I got a nice soft pale one. And I'm using them slightly different. So um, I think I'm going to do this one here. I might go to a slightly bigger brush. I think I'm going to go for my number three brush. So the riggers I buy, I, I buy them in... I buy them in, um, in either odd numbers or even numbers, so I always like to have one in between because if you buy every single one, um, you buy one, two, three, one and two are very similar and two and three are very similar. But if you buy one, three and five, you've bought three brushes and you've got a medium one, a fat one and a thin one. Um, so again, tight Yorkshire Lass, I kind of like that. So I'm going to pull the tops off here. Now my purple did a bit of a blob, so if you can see, this one is clean and this one is dirty. It should be shiny metal and the purple one's a bit blobby. But I'm not going to cle clean it because all that colour will go in down the sink. I'm going to use it. So I want to do this one, so I'm going to touch the yellow first and the colour comes out of here. Um, and sometimes you pick it up and sometimes you don't, so I've got that. And you've got to remember that it's a damp brush and the colour's there. And this is quite strong this actually. So we've got this purple. And I think I'm going to put that purple one there. So it's really strong and in your face. So now we've got purple. So I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to put this purple on the outside. And I shouldn't have moved it next to it, I should, but it doesn't really matter. This is the practice. So then I now want some, some orange colour. I think this one is actually yellow, this one, I think. And then we'll put a little bit of that on the highlights. So we've got two really strong colours. Now I'm going to try this one with, I think I've got number 10 with two, haven't I? I kind of like those colours. But I'm going to try purple with, with the yellow, I think. Mm, perhaps not. I've got quite a lot of different colours here. I've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. I've got 13 different combinations, but I mean, you can choose your own. And I've actually put the pens next to me here. And they're all kind of in order, so I know roughly where they are. Oops, sorry. So we'll do um, what have we got next? We've got two and seven. So two is clockwork. Oh, I used the wrong colour. I should have used three. I should have used Tom. I don't know why I did that. I used three in purple because I like the colours. So I'm going to. Um, I've got a flower here. So I'm going to use Rain and Tom, which is number seven and three. And um, because I, I, I've used these before, so we've got like an orange and a yellow so it's technically not a complementary colour so again I'm just going to touch the brush down there gently now a lot of colour came out there I saw it so I need a bigger flower so we'll put um, we'll put the orange out here and again you can tell it's an ink look at that gorgeous strong colour I don't think 
I'm going to put a little bit of that yellow onto there and I'm going to let that dry. Remember this is the one that I want to be strong. Now this is almost going to blob out. So it's very strong. Is this one. It really is quite strong. I'll just put the purple through there to give that a bit of colour. So I kind of like that. Put a bit more on. You've got to be a bit careful. You couldn't probably do that on a colour page. I just want to do that on there. So I like that colour combination. That's an orange and a purple. So next I need number two and number seven. So number two is called clockwork and number seven is oh purple. Goodness gracious, so at three and ten. So we've got, I've done Billy, I've done Billy, I've done seven, so I want six and seven next. So we do six and seven, which I think is pink and purple. <clears throat> so we've got Tickled and we've got Rain. And um, we'll do this flower here. So I think I'll put... I'll put the pink in the middle. Sometimes you don't always get the colour out. It's a little bit pale, is that one? But it'll be fine. You can touch the end of the nib. So I now need another one. I'll look for this one here. So this time I'll put the pink, the strong pink on the outside. And you can either touch the end of the nib or just gently poke down there to get the strong pink that you want. Again, I do want this quite strong today. And then I'll clean the brush and again just touch the purple and it should be quite strong. This flower here. <clears throat> and we can tell we can get darker ones and paler ones, and then we can get pastel ones. So you can decide whether you like it really dark or not. So you're doing two things you're, you're putting two colours together, and you're also um, mixing them as well. <clears throat> Excuse me, says I want seven and twelve now, so number seven and twelve is the mint I think. Yep, so we've got minted and we've got rain. And again you can use this method because you're not making a mess on anything that's so we want uh, probably this one would look quite nice here. So dampened brush, twist it to a baby wipe and we'll put the mint out first. So I think I'm going to put the mint on the outside, see, on the outside. So if you just go down the side of that, this nib here. Or you can pick it off the end, and how strong you want it. And then we've got the, that nice mint. And it is a bit pale, that one, but it'll look okay, I think, in a second. 
and then of course we can bring out the purple you have that kind of inky effect that we were looking for now this is working slightly different because it, it is a colour book backing so it's a card, it's quite thick, the pages won't react like this so we've got minted which is 12 and we'll go for pink so we have pink and mint next so I have this little flower here which is quite a pretty one so again every time you have a damp baby wipe I can't seem to get any mint out they do clog these, um, but they are definitely not designed for this. Um, so you've got to bear that in mind. This is an experiment. I've done about 20 colour pages. The, these pens are not designed to do this. It's just I wanted an acrylic ink on here. And because I'm using a slight amount of water, it means I can possibly... See. Because I've got don't want too much water because it's too wet. I like the colour combinations and the inky effect. And the mint will go over the gr the the pink and make a purple mauve colour. So that always looks quite nice as well. <clears throat> so next we want uh, six and nine. So we've got we've got high, which is a pale blue and pink. This is a quite a nice combination as well. So we have this little flower here. We'll do this one. So we're going in the pink. And I think I might need the smaller brush because this is a little bit too damp and you, the colour pages will not like this. So I might go to the smaller one. And as soon as that ink touches, it becomes a mauvey pink. But it's very inky, which is what I wanted to try and achieve in the Inky Butterfly book. So that was number six and nine. So now five and eleven, which is blood, which is a red, and um, eleven is is paradise. So it's um, a turquoisey green colour. These are quite nice as well. So, can I put that flower? I'm going to go to the, I think I'm going to go back to the smaller brush because the number one brush, because it just seems to be a little bit easier to pick the colour up. So I think we'll have red on top, and again we can keep that little lovely blood red strong colour. Clean the brush. Steal a bit of blue. And we get some really unusual inky colours, which I really love. And we can take <clears throat> the number one, which is the yellow one. We can put some yellow here. And really quickly just touch to get a really inky effect. Now your colour book page might not like that so we'll have to practice that one. That was just another technique. But I do like some of these colour combinations. I mean there's thousands of colour combinations but these are the ones that I've just been working on the last couple of weeks. 
So the next one is nine and six. No, I've just a nine and six. Eleven. No, I've just an eleven and five. So the next one's eight and six. So six is pink. And this is like a French ultramarine, it's a purple blue. So we'll try these two colours. And we'll use on the pansy again. So twist in a baby wipe, pull the tops off. We'll have the pink on the outside. And again, we want to get the stronger colour. And we can only do it in one go because of the wetness. So we've got to be kind of kind of go for it. Can't really mess about. And then we've got the blue. So by the time the blue gets softened down, we've got some nice pinky purple colours. And again, it's quite inky, it's a bit kind of slapdash, but that's the inky effect that I kind of like. So that was six and eight, and now I want six and ten, which is a green and a pink. So I've got this little flower here. So again, I'm going to go in the pink, this time I'm going to put the pink in the middle. And if you're very quick and do it in one kind of sweeping motion, oops, if you get your colour out, that was a little bit too soft, that, but it worked quite well because it was nice and soft. So I'm going to pick another flower up here. This is going to be completely different because this is a lot stronger pink. So I'm just going to go around there as well. And then take that damp brush, pick the colour up. And then put that gorgeousness on the top to create that inky effect. That works really well. Just scratch a little bit of green on there because I've got an extra bit of green. So again you can play with all these colours and instead of doing colour swatches, practice them in another colour book. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we've got um, six and ten. So we want ten and five, which is blood and Billy. A flower. I think I shall do I do this one here. And there are always hundreds more colours that you can choose as well. So just very carefully just touching that to pick up some colour and I think I'll put the red in the middle this time and it wasn't so strong but again sometimes I like the idea that everyone is slightly different a bit stronger that one so you can and then when you go over the middle section 
just leaving a little bit of a hint of the first colour. It looks really inky. So I think I'm going to do, um, do another one down here. So we'll have, we'll have red on the outside. So I really like these. Um, I don't think I'd want to work them as I've seen them worked on watercolour paper, but definitely like them in in colour books. And you get a gorgeous inky inkiness, which is really pretty and perfect for what, what I wanted for the inky butterfly. So our next colours are, this was 5 and 10, we want 3 and 8 next. So we've got Tom and we've got Brilliant which is an orange and a blue. So I think I'm going to do this one here. So I clean the brush, catch a bit of colour. Look at this gorgeous, gorgeous orangey yellow. And I think I'm going to put that on the tip of this leaf as well. Because there's something about having a colour underneath another colour, especially with inks. So pick up the purple and this is really strong but absolutely love that colour. And it looks gorgeous next to it as well. It's really, really soft blue. So then we want one and six. And this is yellow and pink. I kind of like yellow and pink. It worked quite well together. I'm using the graphic tint pens, pens, graphic liner pens from Derwent. So, stealing a bit of colour. So there's two ways to do it. You can either use the edge, um, and again, I'm going to put that yellow on here. Oh, this is to get a stronger colour. Pinch the colour straight from the pen. Here. So again, we've got the pink. So I've been practicing for a good couple of weeks with these to use them on a colour page because it's an acrylic ink. And the last one is. 1 and 13 and this is a yellow and a green so we could put the yellow on the outside edges of these leaves or actually all over now I would if that was a colour page and not the back cover I would have let that dry I can now put this colour on the edge and it gives me a lovely inky effect. So I've got this leaf, so again I can put, I can put green on the inside like this and then with the damp brush pick up that yellow um, I 
think I'm going to have yellow on that one as well. And that's like a primrose yellow, very pale. And I wanted to have Careful doing that. You can't put the wrong tops on because it, the colours do contaminate each other. Um, I wanted an orange and a green, so I'm going to put the top on that one. Let me just have a look. a look at these here. on the outside then we'll touch that green Oops. make sure you, you pick the green up that's a bit pale I like it a bit stronger than that but you can get a lovely inky effect so we had a little butterfly here And I like the fact that my little butterfly could be any colour that I want. And I like this kind of orange and green and mint green. I think this is really kind of ra rather pretty. And it gives a really beautiful, oops, inky effect. I really like those colours. Can get them a little bit stronger. So I like those colours. So I haven't worked too strong. Um, so I've gone through the colours twice. So let's see if we can see so much of a difference. So I zoom out and we'll see what well, we've got to. They're all dry, so I'm not working very wet at all. that one up there and open that one up Oops, there so we've got some stronger colors here and some paler colors so we've got some quite nice color combinations going on here so the purple and the yellow is quite nice but you can have an orangey yellow and and you can have a purpley pink so, and I like the orange and the purple, and I like the orange and the green as well. So, I've got to decide what to do with the butterfly, which I can't really decide. <laughs> I can't decide, but I've had a bit of a play. So, this is on the front cover, so it's a little bit stronger. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to work on here. So, again, I want to try and have a look at some colours. Um, I like the idea of some monochrome. I don't know if I want to work on this particular section because we don't have many flowers. Um, I think I'm going to use the method with the little dish because it's easier. And it doesn't take long for the, the little baby wipe to get quite saturated. And this, I've got two here and they are really, really, really quite wet. So I keep squeezing them out ever so often. And then that allows you just to kind of dampen the dish. And that's a, enough dampness to stop that acrylic ink from drying out. So let me just have a quick look at chat. Let's zoom in that one. That's about right. Oh, 
Oh, bye, V. Thank you for stopping by. Nobody else popping in. Thanks, guys. Hope everybody's all right. Oops. I'll just put a dribble on there. So I'm going to have a practice. I don't think I need to put anything underneath this because um, I've been practicing this technique. Oops. In six on six on about 20 pages so this was my first little play with strong color and then I had a bit of a blob so I turned the page over and I used it as a monochrome rather than just wash it away um, and I had one or two other blobs as well so we've got one or two other purple ones so we've got this one that was a blob rather than throw the ink away I colored in the monochrome colour. It seems to be the purple and the blue that blob the most. Um, I think there's a crown somewhere. So then I started to play with the actual colour inks um, and I really like them. So that was a blob this morning so I've used the purple. This was using it on a little dish and I kind of like that. Got more control but still some inky effects. Just see if I can turn the, this across. So if I hold that up, you can tell there's some inky effects going on. Um, and in the middle, quite inky, nice inky effects. And I kind of like that. So this is a combination. And then I I did a couple of other pages that I really liked. This one I used the same technique. Really like the colours. And the last two I'd almost got how I wanted to work. So again we've got the, the mint and uh, the, the mint and the pink, the mint and the purple. The yellow and the yellow, the yellow and the pink, the yellow and the purple, the pink and the purple. Um, I got an orange and a green and a blue and a red, and I I really started to kind of get this inky effect with the watercolor way. And the last one was this one, and I, this is what made me decide this is how I want to work in the inky and the butterfly, putting a color down, letting it dry, and then going over it in certain areas. And letting the other colour show through because these are opaque so you can touch over another colour and it's not going to affect it because it's an ink it's acrylic and it's dried and yet you can get like an inky effect on it so I really like these two pages um, and as I say it took about 20 different pages to go before I really got the hang of how I wanted to use these because these particular pens are not supposed to be used in a colour book they are an ink so you have the you have to practice otherwise you will go through have you got any questions so I'm going to have a play with here I kind of like this way of working is um, the damp the damp little baby wipe dampening the dish so it's, it's damp it's wet it's not saturated but it is wet and then when you scratch the colour on, you've got a bit more control. So I think I'm going to use purple and pink. And as you see, you can see how wet it is, is how it runs. And if you use the pink, you can see it running a bit. So I've got my two colours and they run a little bit because there's a little bit of dampness on there. So if I zoom in... Um, I'm just going to really quickly just do just do this little flower here as an extra practice. So we've got our number one rigger, touch a little bit of colour, um, and I think I'm going to have I didn't do the orange one, did I know? This is a little pink flower here, same one. So I'm going to put the pink at the top and then touch a bit of purple and bring that in 
and it's quite strong colour it's just going to kind of mix but we've got the middle purple is a combination of the two and we've got some really nice strong colours there really pretty strong colours from two little scribbles and then if you wanted to mix these two together because I don't want to waste them because it was on a damp ceramic dish the colour has completely disintegrated and it's changed from an acrylic to I can reconstitute it to a watercolour so if I put that there and kind of move about a bit we end up with lots and lots of little pale colours until there's nothing left and that's all we've wasted that tiny little bit in there so I think I like that those colours for these jewels so these jewels in this corner I think I'm going to be using them like that so we want pink and purple out but remember if I have a blob I'm going to leave it and go to another colour page so damp brush we need to wet the, the baby wipe um, and then I want a scribble of pink and a scribble of purple now I'm probably going to tap and get a blob don't want a blob but I might get one and then put the tops back on and I love the fact that we've got inks but they're going a long way so a damp brush I'm going to go in with a pink at the top and I'm going to follow with the purple I kind of like that and again very inky very bright so we're going to go to the top of this one and straight in with the purple right not too much mixing just just barely touching and then we'll look on the other side and see how the page reacts oh lovely nothing it's there it's there we can't see anything it's there and that's because I wasn't rubbing so I'm using acrylic ink but I'm not rubbing and I'm using them not full strength. So I'm going to use this what's oopsie, I'm trying to stay in frame. So we've got what's left. So I've got a damp brush, pick that pink up. Um, and I think I'm going to put the pale pink on the top. And again, that's it now, can't mess about with that. Pick up some purple and kind of stroke that in, go to that side, pick up purple and pink, go to this side to give us a different colour. So I kind of like that. Um, again, we've now got a little bit of pink and a bit of purple, so I'm going to mix them together to give a mauve, and then I'm just going to touch these little ones here and I could fill these in here as well although I think that's the background but I won't be you don't think I'll be doing that so we've got you we're using up these things here the other thing we could do is we could use this color as the highlight and again we can't rub too much that's all we really want is that so we'll get our highlights on on our jewels I think that's all we've got there so I can wipe this and I can do another little scratch if I had done a little tiny bit more we would have got them all out of one but it didn't really matter so we've got a bit of pink and a bit of purple. Clean brush, twist to a ba on a baby wipe to a point. Pick up a bit of pink and on the highlight one we'll have pink. So we use the pink 
on that particular side because that's going to work quite well. So we've got them all, I think. Oh, maybe there's one there. Look. Um, you must have a damp brush. So we'll pick some purple up and we'll go on the furthest one away. And I think that we need a little bit more actually. Because I was going to do them one at once but I decided to do them. And the one thing I didn't do is I didn't make that wet so I need to make that a little bit wetter. So it keeps this from drying out. So we've got pink. And this should do all that far side now. And by doing this, you make them different colours. They look more faceted, really. They look like they're probably as they should be. And I think they look a bit inky, so I kind of like that. I think they're looking a little bit inky. And we have four of these to do. Um, I think what I might do next is I'm just going to do the, the leaves. So I like the orange and the blue. So I'm going to clean this off. So it's damp. And then we wanted the uh, number, we wanted Tom because I like that one. And we wanted Billy number 10. Um, and I probably have to go to a finer brush. So this one is a number one graduate rigger from Dale Rowney. And it's just a bit thinner. So touch the yellow and I'm just going to go around the outsides of the flowers, I think. And then we touch the green, put that in. So we want some yellow on the outside. We could do all that, I suppose, first. We could do all that one. and then touch the green. And then we could put the green in. Oh my goodness, the sun is shining. So we've got some unusual colours, which is quite nice when you work in a colour book. So I'll just pull these down a little bit because there's two hiding here. So we should be able to constitute that back into a pale, a pale colour. And then pick up the blue. The blue green and then we want the green leaves. kind of like those and then we have this kind of swirly thing going on which I did originally in green because of this uh, in gold because of this crown um, and I do have a yellow one but I think it possibly would be make quite nice in yellow um, I have the clockwork, although it says it's an orange. I think it looks quite yellowy gold. 
I think I'm going to use two colours for this. I use a yellow and a gold, so I can kind of have a bit of a highlight going on if I want. Um, I think I like that, that idea. So we've got number one and number two. So it's a yellow and a kind of a gamboge tangerine colour. So on the very top here, we want the pale colour. And then lower down. I want to mix in a bit of dark. And I thought I was working upside down, I'm not working the right way up, so actually it looks wrong. But we do have a kind of a natural bit of a highlight. So everything on top wants to be that colour and everything underneath wants to be the darker one. And then we've got this watercolour effect going on as well, so it can look quite nice that. And we can keep manipulating that round to make that look quite pretty. So I kind of like that, and I like the the, the kind of inkiness about it as well. Um, and we'll just check that we're doing okay. Yep, there's nothing there. Absolutely nothing there. Like and we've dried now. So we're working just barely damp, just a barely damp brush. And because I'd, I'd got that little bit of dampness on the dish, all that colour has melted to a watercolour so it's all going to be on the page so I kind of like that it means we're not going to waste any and if you want a very pale highlight you can put it in certain places and then catch up with the dark, the darker one next time so you can either carry on working in that yellow the two yellows um, what else have we got in this colour I think we've just got the two yellows haven't we so the butterfly, let me have a look at the butterfly. I'm just going to do the butterfly next. I'd thought of these two colours. So again, I need that wet and I've got... Actually, it wasn't this colour, it was the mint. I think it was the mint. So I've got mint and purple. I think they're the two colours that I wanted this little butterfly. So this is a tiny butterfly, this. So we'll put mint and then we'll put purple. I think I like mint purple and this this kind of blue here. And we could put some little drops of ink. And again, there's absolutely nothing, nothing there at all. So I kind of like those colours. Might want them a little bit, a bit stronger. Might want them a little bit stronger, but I kind of like those. I like those colours, I like the inkiness about it and it's a little bit unpredictable as well so that again takes you out of your comfort zone. So that's my first start of my inky butterfly with my Derwent graphic pens. Thanks for watching.